<laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, my Scottish people, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, here we are on reading with John. That was just me trying to recognize that the weather is changing. And a lot of us can fall into the world of that's it. But anyway, now let's be serious. <laughs> Today we are doing something different, something lovely. Oh, before we go into that, my name is John. My name is my name is my name is John. <laughs> What's your name? Ah, <laughs> Jay. What's your name? Little Jay. Oh, they don't have any rhymes. They are not as sweet as me. <laughs> so today we are doing something very interesting. That's it. Dancing, no, yeah. <laughs> no, no dancing, no dancing. Don't mind that. We are doing something interesting, and we are going to examine the prehistorical Africa. Really? Are we interested in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're looking mm -hmm. at the prehistorical. What do you think about that? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Eyes are blinking. Anyway, I just felt okay. Let us go and know more about where we come from and. You have a lot of surprises coming your way. And we want to really say thank you for all our viewers. We've been noticed and we have a funder. Yay! So I want to thank the fund community for sponsoring us. And we have a program coming under the pipeline where you get to see much of what the money was spent for. But for now, I want to thank you. Thank our viewers, thank you for our listeners, thank you for all the people that comment and all the people that give us the feedback and we're working on it, we're improving, we're getting much better. And so, showtime! Prehistory, prehistory, prehistory. <laughs> African prehistory, so that's our founder, the community fund. And that's our info hop me logo. Logo, logo, logo. <laughs> the girls are wondering what is the word is wrong with our mom today? I think we actually need to get to the previous <laughs> We need to. Intro is done. Intro is done. Okay. So now, who is this? Tell us about who is that? Nobody's on that screen. This is Lucy, Lucy the Australopithecus. Woo! Tell us about Lucy. She was discovered in Ethiopia in 1974, and she's a collection of bones that once made up the skeleton of a hominid, which is the mem an, a member of the ape family. So, Lucy is, let's say, how many million years? Two point two two million years ago and she's discovered in ethiopia in africa wow. tell me about it africans we came to the world first yay, yay. Wow. what wow. did you like that 3.22 minus 3.18 million years yeah, so. ago so that's how old she is that's the mya stands for that's how old she is so, are you proud that the oldest existing resemblance of human is from Africa? Yeah. 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 Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, tell us more about Lucy. Unlike other primates, Lucy stood up straight, had hair, long arms, and slightly curved fingers and toes. Ooh, interesting. More? She looks like a human. But she was much shorter, as you can see in the picture on the right. Mm -hmm. And she had a much smaller brain. <sighs> Lucy had a much smaller brain. Let's see if we can get her to be bigger in this picture. Can you see Lucy bigger in the picture? That is Lucy. We have disappeared, but that's Lucy. Hello, Lucy. We are part of your heritage. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what else? <laughs> Even if Lucy isn't our ancestor, mm -hmm. her discovery in Africa added an import, important piece of our fossil record and also supports the theory that 
life originated in Africa. So, life originated in Africa. Africa. That makes me read. <laughs> this is exactly. <laughs> Don't look like that. Am I making you poor? <laughs> okay, so Lizzie J, what do you have? Tell us about that. Um, I have the uh, Aboriginal Australians and wow. the uh, Aboriginal in Indigenous Australians are a collection of roughly five hundred different groups that are considered the first people to inhabit Australia. Wow, they are the first people to inhabit Australia. So how do they have a link with Africa? Tell us more. Scientific research suggests that some of the original Afri Australians descended from a group of Africans that left the continent for Australia over 75 thousand years ago. That's wow. A long time ago. So Australian Arab uh, Aborigines actually migrated from Africa. That's interesting. Wow. Anything more? Uh, Aboriginals have a close relationship with nature, are excellent storytellers and skilled musicians slash artists. Wow. wow. I need to go and find one to see. To carry out my drawing, even though it's very good. <laughs> okay, so let's say although less than five percent of Australians are Aborigines today, great strides have been taken to re-establish lost culture and improve the healthcare of a long-standing group. Because over time, the Aborigines were driven out of their land, and the foreigners, Australians today, took over their land. And great effort has been made for a lot of restoration. Just like in Africa, where it was colonized, when foreigners came into Australia, they drove out the real people that existed there, the Aborigines, and they were really, really maltreated. I did a bit of research about the Aborigines and their healthcare system when I was doing my master's. And every time, as I was writing the report, I was shedding tears because the people had been treated so horribly but thank goodness things are changing now yeah and they have a better standing than history so we have the what do we have here Cosian languages or you can call them click languages so who are the Cosian languages what is that about Cosian languages are a group of african languages and they are often used with click consonants Ooh. which is unique to that group of languages so you don't hear these in english or spanish or french it's just in these cousin languages ah so this language is one of the smaller languages in africa and is often used to southern africa's original inhabitants wow and it's one of the ancient most ancient languages in the world as a cousin poison peak Cousin, cousin, I don't know. It's a click of people <laughs> have been around for over 60,000 years. Wow. That's a long time. And they're still there. So, can you see the map of Africa and where these people are? They are Sorry. in the southern Africa. They're in the southern hemisphere. So, dude, southern hemisphere. Well done. So, all the people around Angola, Zam, um, Angola, Namibia, Botswana, South Africa, um, Switzerland, all those Soto. people, all those people are part of these click languages and they've existed over 6,000 years ago. That's interesting to know. I'm, I'm really, really what about that? So can you tell me any other language that is as old as 60,000 years ago? No, no. way! Before, before BC, before Christ. Wow, non-existed. So even languages has their roots in Africa. Tell wow. me about it. What are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so what do we have here today? Um, on this one, we have the Lambobo Lam Lam Boom. What's that? 
It was discovered during the 1970s in the border cave excavations in the Lembo in the Lembo in the Lembo mountains of space. So I will just tell you that I will just show you where it was discovered from. So it was discovered here, around this place, and that is also around the same place where the oldest language is also existing. Wow. Wow. So Africa, hmm. Hmm. you just ho you hold civilization in your hands. You should be proud, Africans. Okay, come on. So what's that? One of the oldest mathematical objects known as about 35,000 B BCE and holds 29 notches, which are easily seen. So wow. this is the oldest mathematical object. Math so, also started in so, Africa. So wow. as you see, it shows the Ishango bone uh -huh. and the Lambo Wow. So you see? I Even counting. Bones. So maybe they use bones as rulers or for counting. Yes, for measuring Or things. even for like playing music. Exactly. Or for measuring when they want to build and all that. So they use this for measuring too. Yeah. Wow. So maths started in Africa. Ho, 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 ho. It's close to Christmas, so I need to laugh like that. Okay, tell us more. <laughs> okay, well, um, <laughs> then the markings are thought to symbolize the lunar cycles, which ah. has 29.3. 531 days. Oh, oh I see. so it is used for counting days. Ah, that is clever. So they know exactly when the next harvest is going to come or when the next thing is going to be done. Okay, so tell us more. The instrument is made of a baboon fibula and is the oldest indication showing a symbol of a symbolic connection between the baboon and the people. So it shows the connection between the baboon and the people. That's interesting. Wow, this is an interesting fact, Kate. It's interesting to know that the discovery of the Lambibo bone gives evidence of the belief that Africa is the best place of basic and advanced mathematics. So mm. basic and, and advanced. advanced mathematics. Give me five, you're an African, give me five. <laughs> I'm proud to be an African anytime, any day. Any week, any month, any year. Excuse me. So let's go to the next one. Okay. Who are these people? There is the Zing Empire. So who are the Zing Empire? It's one of the oldest empires in the world, existing around 15,000 years ago. Wow. Okay. So tell this us more. empire was thought to be located in West Africa, through Egypt, and all the way up to the Sahara. What? Wow. Yeah. This empire had a green environment with lakes, horticulture, and was farming. Yeah. Uh, mummification, villages, and towns. The ruler of the Zing Empire was Tyru Afuk, who was a godlike ruler. So they all obeyed him. Wow, is that maybe that's a picture there? Yeah. Wow. Zing historians say they were the first uni universal civilization because of its influence over so many other African civilizations and areas, wow. like the Mediterranean, the Americas, China, Greece, and Japan. Wow! wow. <laughs> so, they are linked to all these other civilizations. Let me repeat the last line. They are linked to the civilization of the Mediterranean, the Americans, <laughs> China, <laughs> Greece, <laughs> and Japan. <laughs> that makes me laugh so much. So, all the nations of the world are linked to Africa. Africa. <laughs> you must be proud, girls. So they're just shades of brown. They're just shades of brown. They're just shades of brown. There's no black and white. Everybody's a shade of brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone is and you know what? Let's just assume it was because when they moved to this other area, 
the cold condition maybe it affected them and over time they lost their brown pigment and they became peach and peacher and peaches if there's any word like peaches. that <laughs> if there's any word like that so everybody has a root in africa so that's so they it. weren't like oh the and this one is the berberis the berberis who are the berberis the berberis are a pre-arab ethnic group that comes from north africa okay morocco mm -hmm. niger mm -hmm. algeria mm -hmm. egypt mm -hmm. tunisia libya, tunisia tunisia mm -hmm. tunisia mm -hmm. libya mali mm -hmm. and more that's a lot of places <laughs> it started from morocco and it ended in Mor mauritanian mauritania okay so tell us more about the barbers they and um, that date back to the so what are they connected to they thought to be connected to the ancient egyptians wow, wow. okay continue the berbers created their own system of high higher g lock high higher g lopic higher hieroglyphic hieroglyphic writing and phonetic alphabet okay both berbers lived in the mountains mm -hmm. but the culture consisted of many different tribes religions and combined languages so originally the barbers were christians and, and Jews. Jews. Mm -hmm. That is why when you watch prehistoric and Jewish movies, you will see people that look like Arabs in them. Like the Berbers. Yeah, because what is the name of this movie? Uh, Prince of Egypt? No, not the Prince of Egypt. There's this one that the is chosen. A, no, the one that was a prince and it's a very old movie. It was a prince that went they, they caught him and he went into slavery and he had to buy himself back i would remember I watched it? yes we watched it together uh, did i yes yeah. you did uh, oh. that <laughs> his, his mother and his sister became leopards by the time he came back leopards? yeah oh like they had leprosy yes they came around, like yes they only were living outside the city he was a rich jewish guy that um had a misgiving with the yeah with the rulers oh when i remember i will tell you yeah okay yeah but if the okay. viewers if you remember the movies don't remind me i forgot it okay so they are linked to the christians the jewish and the barbers culture still strives today with at least 14 million barber language speakers living in north africa, africa. wow I'm so pleased with Africa. Africa. So, 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 let me get who is those ones. The next one is the ancient Me Meso Mesopotamian. Mesopotamian. So, are the ancient Mesopotamians? They are considered to be the first civilization located in the Middle East. Wow. So, Last we've we've discovered those in southern africa we've discovered those in northern, northern africa, africa. we've no. discovered those in the middle east so africa has just everything ancient i i didn't know that the middle east was in africa yep the middle east is in africa continue well it's part of africa it's part of africa part of, asia. part of asia oh yeah continue and even part of europe yeah and their citizens built houses and ran a complex government. Wow. wow. Because they were mainly barbers, Me Mesopotamians invented the cedar plow, which allowed them to plow and seed at the same time. Wow. wow. Okay. They de developed the first food city in the world called Eridu, and they also developed Baghdad, Babylon, and Nippur. Wow. So Baghdad that we know today was developed by Babylon was developed by them. Mesopotamia. And has its roots in Africa. I've heard Mesopotamian a lot in the Bible and for the first time its roots is still linked to Africa. Africa. 
Africa. Africa. Africa. Africa. Africa. Africa. Africa. Okay, come on, tell us about this group of people. Who are they? They're the Nubians. Mm -hmm. And they're um, an ancient people of northern Africa. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm not that northern Africa. Okay. The Nubians were a non Arab group. So they are not Arab like the Berbers. Okay, these ones are not Arabs. Okay, or the Berbers were Mesopotamians. Uh, Mesopotamians were not really Arabs. I think they were just they had their own culture. They were neutral. Okay, so continue here. Yeah? Continue. He lived in both Egypt and Sudan. Um, oh, so the present day Sudan are from the Nubians. Okay, con continue. Keep your fingers alone, Billy to Jay. Okay. Because it will, you will hurt yourself later on. Okay, continue. The Nubians were excellent hunters and herdsmen. Mm -hmm. and, and as they moved towards the Nile, they also began the art of pottery and jewelry. Pottery. Oh, so pottery and jewelry started from them. Wow. Oh, so, they, no, they could. What you're wearing in your ear? No, not necessarily. <laughs> not this one. This, oh, is modern, this was more than they want. So, yeah, yeah. continue. But you can see in the picture, yeah. the person is actually wearing an earring if you zoom in. Okay, yeah. that's true. Can we zoom in? Just continue it to Jay. Leave the finger alone. Yeah, As miners of gold and ivory, mm -hmm. the Nubians were able to trade with their neighbors, the Egyptians. Ah. Sales of several, several various Nubian leaders have been passed down, including the one-eyed warrior queen. Wow! Oh, so the warrior queen is from Libya. Yeah. yeah. Who fought of the, the Roman? She's the one that lost her eye during the war, and she's a super fierce warrior. And when she was, when she had two eyes, she wasn't as fearless as she was when she had one eye. So the one eye made her more fearless. Yeah. Fearless. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so modern day Nubians live in what ancient Nubia and speak the Nubian language, so they still exist up to you today. So let's see what's in the next slide. Mm, I get to read about Cheddar. Oh, so where the chair, the man. Oh, did you see that? The first modern Britain. Ah, oh, oh. it's still linked to us, African. Oh, oh. Hello, Scottish kids. Listen to this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Discovered in Gals Cave in Cheddar Gorge, which is its name now, mm -hmm. Somerset, England, in 1903, mm -hmm. Cheddar Man is Great Britain's oldest complete human skeleton. Wow. When I first saw this, I thought it was late. But yeah. It's actually yeah. Okay. On to do. Though originally thought to be fair skin because they're in Britain, so of course you have got to think that. Mm -hmm. DNA testing has shown that Cheddar Man had blue eyes, very dark skin, and wavy hair. You see, I told you, I said when they migrated into other parts of the country, climate change and over time, their, their pigments began to change into peach, peacher, peaches. <laughs> so there's nobody called black and white. Everybody originated from Africa. From so, the black if skin. you see a white person, the yes. peach person, peach person, peach, without peach, this. peach, 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 peach. Uh huh. So, what do you say? Uh -huh. It has a link from Africa. Okay, so continue, Cheddar Man. The little is known about Cheddar Man himself. Mm -hmm. We do know that he ate a good diet, but died a violent death in his twenties. Twenties? Oh dear. He was only twenty something. Yeah, continue. It's early. Mm. The discovery and DNA testing of Cheddar Man are important because the challenge is what most people think about ancient people in European countries. So the Cheddar Man just shows us that those everybody in Europe has a root from Africa. Yeah. So, kids, this is very important for us to go into the prehistory. Uh, unfortunately, you might not learn this from school, but you're learning it and we're exposing it to you that the Cheddar Man is the first modern Britain Britain. and is black, is dark, interesting hair like us. Yeah, he has <laughs> long, long hair like me. Yeah, long hair. Oh, come on, look at that. <laughs> 
So it's interesting that we know that history started in Africa and people migrated into Australia, migrated into America, migrated to China, migrated to other parts of the world. They migrated to Britain. Migrated to Britain. And then we have Cheddarman as the evidence that the roots of all humans are from Africa. Africa. So tell us about the Great Pyramid. Okay. Well, Giza. Giza. Okay. The Great Pyramid of Giza in Cairo, Egypt. Cairo. Cairo, Egypt, is also known as the Pyramid of Khufu, mm -hmm. or the Pyramid of Cheers. Okay. The oldest and largest pyramid at Giza and the oldest seven wonder of the ancient world. Wow. Actually, it has eight sides. Does it? Yes. Wow. That can only be seen from above. Ah. Oh. Believed to be a tomb for the fourth this destiny, Egyptian pharaoh Khufu, but no mummies were ever found opening up debate among schoolers for possible other uses. Okay. Uh, originally stood 481 meters tall. Wow. The tallest structure on Earth, sadly, 3,800 years. Until so for 3,800 years, this was the tallest structure, structure on Earth. Until structures like China showed up. <clears throat> And structures in London. No, set up. but Ooh. this used to be the tallest thing on Earth until Mount until Everest. The Mount Everest has always been there. Mount Everest is a is a is a natural natural mountain, but this one is built by man. So this is a structure built by man. Okay. The mountain is is a mountain. Okay, so it says. The let me read the, Let me read the last one. Estimated to weight five thousand five million tons. It sits on the center of the land mass of the earth, one of only two places on the planet that could support its weight. Wow. wow. So if you move, if you move it, it that's it. It can't support its weight, it just crush. So it's actually built there. And so, 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 I mean, I, I can't even, yes, I can't even explain how they do that, how they do that, and it's not built in it. That shows you that pre-Africans, pre-historian Africans were very intelligent people. Yeah. They are very smart people. And that's why Africans are still smart. From the hero topics we dealt with, we can see how smart they are. Many of the inventions are kind of traced back to them, even though they never took the glory for them, even though they were never praised for them. But that just shows that we are clever people. Anybody tells you you're dumb, you're not. You are clever. History started from you, guys. Yeah. And you should be proud of yourself. You should go back to school, tell your classmates, tell everybody, history started from me. Look at the pyramids, look at everything. Look at the Asian people and all the Asian languages and everything. And so, kids, it's so interesting and so good to I know that. I used to think and the Asian things were from somewhere in United Kingdom. Oh, oh. now you see <laughs> I used to Africa. think Egypt was there. Oh. 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 Yes. So Egypt is in Africa. So civilization started from Africa. Basically it started from Ethiopia. Yeah. Wow. East Africa. East Africa. So Lucy, thank you for showing the world you started it all. So do you think there is much more to discover? Hmm. What do you think? Yes. yes yes so we'll wait i will see next week what we discover more from prehistorical africa. africa and on this note we want to say thank you for joining us we love having you and we hope to see you next time on reading with, with joan. joan now this is discovering with joan on couch chat couch chat couch chat, couch chat. Okay, see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.